Christ the Lord is risen today. This year we worship as one in spirit, praying with and for each other while physically apart. Welcome to our worship on this Easter Sunday. You may have heard it said that the sanctuaries are empty today, but so was the tomb. And so it is wonderful that we can come together and celebrate the resurrection of Christ. I invite you now to join with me in the call to worship. You can download your bulletin from our website. If you don't have it, no problem. The response is Christ the Lord is risen today. Let us share together. Don't weep. Don't mourn. There is great good news. Christ the Lord is risen today. Put away your garments of mourning. Let the light of God's love flood into your lives. Christ the Lord is risen today. No more do we have to fear the darkness. It has been overcome by God's light. Christ the Lord is risen today. Amen. Our opening hymn is Christ the Lord is Risen Today. We will be singing two verses, and you at home get to choose which two verses are your favorite. Sing those. Let us join now in the prayer of confession. Loving God, we confess that at times we do not share in the joy of resurrection, but are caught in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontented, grumbling, and anxious. Forgive us for not sharing in the good news. Forgive us when we find it more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk the joy and encouragement of new life in Christ. Call us back to your ways, O God, to seek hope and reconciliation, restoration and peace. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. And now, in a moment of silence, I invite you to lift up your own prayers of confession to God. Hear these words of assurance. Christ is risen. 
The stone is rolled away. The tomb found empty. Mary calls out, I have seen the Lord. We have seen Christ too in every helping hand, in every heartfelt gift, in every choice to restore life in this world. We are called to this new life, a life of forgiveness and reconciliation. You are forgiven. Accept your forgiveness and know that God loves you and desires great joy for your life. Walk forward on this journey of faith, knowing your brothers and sisters are with you. Amen. And now let us share together in the prayer that our risen Savior taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me now in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. One of the scriptures for this year's Easter selections is from the book of Jeremiah. The people of Jeremiah's time were going through trauma. Jeremiah was frustrated with their behavior for many chapters, but ultimately his tone changes, and he prophesies God's promise that they will be built back up from the devastation they have endured. They will again feel joy, and they will begin to plan for the future again, planting vineyards on the hills, even in the midst of exile and pain. Hear these words of promise. Jeremiah 31, verses 1 through 6. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still. 
when striving sees my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God and helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live Hear now the gospel account of the Easter story according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, on the first day of the week, as the dawn was just coming up, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. The guards shook for fear of him, and they became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you have come to see Jesus, who was crucified. He has been raised, as he said. Come and see where he lay. 
And then go and tell the disciples that indeed Jesus has been raised from the dead as he said. And indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So the women left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. And they went to tell the disciples. Suddenly, Jesus himself came and met them and said greetings. The women bowed down, grabbed hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid, but go and tell my brothers, I am going to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Oh God, we give you great thanks that we can come together and worship the risen Christ. In him alone is our cornerstone. So may the message which is already been opened in our hearts, continue to bloom. And may it be the one which you have ordained and the one which we obey. Amen. In that account from Matthew in the resurrection, the angel sits on the stone and tells the women, do not be afraid. This phrase is said numerous times in the Bible, and on this Easter day, how much more meaningful is it for us to hear? We cannot help but be fearful. As we listen to the news, as we stay home, as we worry about catching a deadly disease or passing it on to our loved ones, So throughout the season of Easter, I invite you to use a worry stone, a stone to carry with you and to remember when you are feeling anxious or worried to not be afraid. Now you've heard of me speak of this before because I've been prone to worrying all my life. But this time, the worry stone is a little different that I'm encouraging you to take. Find one in your backyard, or if you don't have one laying around, let me know. I can drop one off to you. And then paint or draw a heart on it, or some other inspirational word or phrase. In this way, I hope it will remind you of the angel's message, which If you noticed, Jesus also says again, do not be afraid. For when we have the love of God in our heart, it is just too full for us to have worry and fear there too. Now, that doesn't mean you can go out grocery shopping and throw caution to the wind because you have a stone with a heart on it. You might have heard some people saying that their faith is strong enough to protect them from the coronavirus, or if they die, then it was meant to be. I, however, ascribe to another theology the one of the risen Christ who on Thursday washed his disciples' feet and shared the love that he had and said, because I have loved you, you also must love others. Our bishop has led the way in professing this. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves. That means not putting anyone at any undue risk. Let's continue to do our part by mitigating the spread of the disease so we can ease the burden on our healthcare workers. 
We can allow those who need to be out working and give them the peace of mind knowing that they will not come into any undue extra contact with others. I love the little blurb that's been trending on Facebook. I have faith and I wear my seatbelt. I have faith and I wear a helmet. I have faith and I stay home. But here is the good news, my friends. We do not have to stay home riddled with fear because Christ the Lord is risen and he has come to bring us love. And so the more we follow these guidelines, the quicker we'll be able to come back together and worship together. In my church and worship class and seminary, we talked about our baptism. And I said I was baptized Methodist. And my professor promptly corrected me. Now, she too was a Methodist, so nothing against Methodism. But she said we aren't baptized into any particular denomination, but rather into the family of God whose heart is love. Today of all days, it's helpful for me to remember that Christ died for all of us and has conquered death for all of us. And at the heart of the matter is love. I think this time of isolation has given many people time to really ponder what's most important in their lives. So over this time of Eastertide, which in our liturgical calendar goes from the Sunday of Easter through Pentecost, 40 days, um, we will have the, in 40 days is the uh, rising when Jesus ascends into heaven, and then we celebrate Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples, and we celebrate the birthday of the church. So during this time period, we will hear more about Jesus's message of what truly is the heart of the matter for our lives and for what Jesus calls for us to be and to do. And we can have hope. For as the prophet Jeremiah said, we will again shake our tambourines. I love how the message interpretation says it. God told them, I never quit loving you and never will. Expect love, love, and more love. And so now I'll start over with you and build you up again. You'll resume your singing, grabbing tambourines, and joining the dance. Christ is our cornerstone. Christ has risen. Christ is going before us just as he did when he first met the disciples. We will see him. And we will see one another when we resume. And we will sing. We will break out and dance right here in this sanctuary. And we will experience a love unlike we have ever experienced before. So hold on to your rock. Wear your mask if you have to go out. And in the meantime, don't stop praising God. Don't ever stop praising God because Christ the Lord is risen today. Let the people say, Amen. I thank you for all those who have continued to send in your offering. 
It is a blessing for us so that we can continue to bring you services. We can continue to be in ministry with one another. And so also for those who have shared for our virtual Easter flowers, although the altar is not filled in usual fashion, we do have some lilies here that we can think about as just a portion of the love that is being shared. And so I invite you to continue to donate towards the virtual Easter flowers, as well as to Heifer and Umcor, whatever usual things you give to us, we continue to accept them. And so now let us bring our offerings to God. Let us pray the prayer of dedication together. Mighty God of resurrection and redemption, we offer our gifts alongside our alleluias. We offer our hands and feet and voices to a world that needs hope so desperately. May the world see in us your redeeming love and the triumph of light over darkness. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. And also, please continue to send in your joys and your concerns. We have a prayer list that goes out each Monday, if you would like to be a receiver of that, simply email the church office at office at clintonumc.org, and we will continue to keep you in prayer. Let us pray. God of new dawns, new awakenings, new life, we hear your voice this day saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. With a love, I have drawn myself to you. On this Easter day, we have heard the prophet say that you will rebuild and make all things new. And so we give you great thanks for that hope. We give you thanks for you are the risen and living Christ. Oh God, as we celebrate the gift of new life in Christ, we do acknowledge that we continue to live with fear and worry. And so we ask that you help us hold on to your love in a new and strong and powerful way. Help us to hold on to our rocks, for amidst the storm, you are our strong foundation. Oh God, we lift up to you all those who continue to be ill and in hospital. We continue to lift up to you those who are in isolation and are unable to see their family members. Oh God, we continue to give you great thanks for those on the front lines, the medical workers, the essential workers, the people who protect and serve us, our military. Oh God, there are so many people we lift up to you now in the quiet of our hearts. Give us the courage to be your witnesses. So just like the women, as they left with fear and great joy, may we go forth sharing 
your message of hope through our phone calls, through our messages, through our sharing of our hearts on our doors. And ultimately, O oh God, we thank you for your love and for the life you have given to each and every one of us. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. And we have a real treat for our final hymn. For those of you who are on our YouTube, you will now see a broadcast from the UMC denomination as a whole, where singers from across the globe have come together to sing Christ the Lord is Risen Today. You will see a familiar face if you look carefully on the second at, on the second to last row bob hale is seen in one of the slots and i know nan and bob hawes are on the audio and perhaps other members of our choir for those of you who are watching us on the tv we invite you to go to our website if you have internet access, www.clintonumc.org, and there you will be able to see the link. Christ the Lord is risen indeed. And now receive the benediction. As we close our time together, remember that God is always with you, no matter what you face, no matter what trials or hardships come your way. God is right beside you, raising your very life, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry. And know it is a true and holy thing to feel. But also know that joy and hope and love have the final answer. For Christ has conquered death. Christ is risen. Let the people say, Christ is risen indeed. Amen.